I was interested in this story uh, in regard to some stuff online and I thought some particularly well-informed comments made by Bob McCroskey from the group Family First, which suggest that this, and we also found that there have been a couple of other surveys and studies like this in New Zealand out of Auckland and Massey. So is this part of a global woke academic term to normal, uh, or, or sorry, movement to normalise pedophilia? Uh, joining us now is Bob McCroskey from Family First. Bob, can you answer that that question with any certainty? Yeah, no, there's been plenty of research. Morning, Sean, and uh, good work, Ben. Uh, I think it's tribute to uh, places like the platform that have been uh, raising this issue. The, what's amazed me has been the stunning silence of the mainstream media to quite a significant story about, uh, you know, a major university promoting uh, basically a doctorate or, a, you know, doctorate dissertation on pedophilia and should we be nicer to them. So, look, this has started right back at the beginning of the 2000s, actually. There's a group that is called B4U, so the letter B, number four, and then letter U, before you act. It was founded in 2003. It's a, it's a group of psychiatrists and mental health professionals, and many of them are at prestigious universities, and they were dedicated to the proposition that MAP, so this is um, minor, attracted minor attracted people, person, yeah, yeah. So they don't like the word pedo pedophile anymore, and or child abuser, that. or child yeah. pity rapist. And you'll see that in the title of the um, Victoria University. The title is testing the effects of educational modules for reducing stigma towards not pedophiles, but people with a sexual attraction to children. And interestingly, that they say people because. Uh, the overwhelming majority of are pedophiles men. are men. So, I mean, that's an in interesting aspect there. But So this group was set up in 2003, and they were dedicated... Internationally, to let's just clarify, an international group. International group, yeah, but US-based. Yeah. Uh, and that men basically were seriously... Pedophiles were seriously misunderstood and suffer from being stigmatised by the rest of us, they believe that pedoph pedophilia is not a sexual disorder. It's a sexual orientation, much like homosexuality. I, I was thinking about that, Sean, and of course the major problem with that is that the because the overwhelming majority of uh, pedophiles are men, uh, it's, it's not a sexual orientation because it would be even across the sexes. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, but at least this is as crazy, even. Bob, as saying wanting to rape people is a sexual orientation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so they, they don't like the fact that um, people say that pedophiles may be mentally disturbed. Some argue that it's nonsense to say that children are unable to consent to sex with adults, which is just a sickening statement to read, let alone say. And some of them even say that an adult's desire to have sex with children is normative. And then uh, after that, there was a group called Prestasia Foundation, uh, which, believe it or not, Sean, I'm sure you're not surprised, is based in San Francisco, Prostasia label themselves a new kind of child protection organisation. What they try to argue, and I think that's this is what the uh, Victoria University will try and argue, is that if they take away the stigma, they will therefore reduce the likelihood of the crime. That, I mean, that itself is just a folly to even think like that, but that's what some of these groups say. They say they aim to reduce child sexual abuse by taking away the shame of being attracted to a minor and thereby reducing the likelihood of someone acting out on their desires. Now, the problem with that is that, I mean, you've got to go back to the definition of a pedophile and a pedophile, uh, it, uh, well, pedophilic disorder is what is the name given to it, is a person who has a recurrent an intense sexual attraction specifically to prepubescent children, those 13 and under. So these are people that are acting out on it. Look, if people are seeking help for it, yes, we should be kind and we should give them all the help they need. <clears throat> but what Victoria University are subtly doing is that rather than seeing children as the victims of a heinous crime and the stigma against anybody that even thinks about sexually abusing children, what this study is trying to do is almost trying to indoctrinate us to be... To normalise nice it. The, well, it's actually to see the pedophiles as the victims. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is that you can still be a criminal and not have, as I said, assaulted a child to view, 
to share, to store sexual images of children is a crime. Right? Exactly. And, yeah. yeah, and the research shows that, uh, you know, the majority of these pedophiles have been watching violent and hardcore pornography. But also the, the other thing that is really significant to note is that um, people who are pedophiles are, are very intentional and very sneaky about it. They they cultivate personas of alleged good character. They ingratiate themselves with, you know, they get involved with uh, organisations to make them look better. Um, it, it is all very sneaky. And look, part of that is because there is such a grotesque uh, aspect to it and society rightly abhors it in, in all its ways. And yet what this, what this trend is, is to try and normalise it. I just want to read a quote from Anna Salter, who's a US psychologist. She's a recognised expert. She's done over 500 evaluations of high-risk sex offenders. She said this. She said, while pedophiles do not choose their attractions, she does not believe those who offend are being punished unfairly. Treatment should be encouraged, but without minimising the impact abuse has on the victims' lives. And this is the key bit, this quote. It's a choice to act on child molestation. We don't need to say offending isn't so bad. It really isn't your fault. You really couldn't control it. You're a victim of a punitive society. We need to say offending is devastating. It damages the lives of victims. It's damaged your life. You can learn to control yourself. You have the capacity to do better. And I thought, you know, couldn't agree more with that statement. The problem is that what we're seeing in our culture is what I call linguistic gymnastics. And it's trying to turn this negative association of the word pedophile, turning it around to, oh, you're just a minor attracted person who really can't help yourself. It's a sexual orientation and we need to stop the stigma and be nice to you. And look, Victoria University needs to get a pretty clear message that nobody's falling for that. Well, have you been in contact with the university? As, I, as Ben just told us, it's the very latest. We can't really figure out what's going on. They first tried to gaslight us, and, and that's what they were doing. Uh, now it seems that the electronic curtains are going up around this study. But we really don't know that it's been pulled, and, and no one will front from their university, including their ethics committee, which approved the research. Yeah, while you were um, just introducing, I actually just quickly went to my Substack and just went on the link that I'd put on there, and nope, it's all shut down, goes to a disconnected link. So I would say Victoria University has definitely uh, put it behind a wall. I'm not sure, you know, if they're standing by it, as Ben alluded to, uh, if they're standing by it, then they should leave the material up and allow people to come to their own decision. 